Good morning guys, welcome to Butte Mountain Homestead. Uh, today's video is going to be a little different. Uh, it's not going to be all happy-go-lucky. Uh, it's going to be mostly a vlog. And before I get into the content of the video, um, you do not have to worry about anything graphic going to be shown in this video. So you can stay and listen to watch. Um, there's going to be some information that a lot of people aren't aware of and um just some contact or con yeah some context to the way that we live here and how a lot of people i know live so with that said i'm going to turn the camera around and i'm going to show you something and then i'll flip it back around <clears throat> so right over about right there last year april 20th 2023 I saw a cow and I saw a little black dot. Now we, um, for those that don't know, my husband is a third generation barley farmer and for 20 plus years they have also raised beef cattle. So we usually have fall calves, which means the calves are born in the fall. Um, and they chose to do it that way. Some do spring calves, some do both. We chose fall. So for her to have a calf in the spring, that meant a bull got in <laughs> with an open cow. So anyways, I uh, told Jean there's a little black dot right over there. And if I can find a, a photo of that day, I will put it up on the screen or I'll put it after this part. But so he rode out there and he called me from the how or called me and he said, one of our cows had a bull calf and I'm sitting there doing the math and I said, well, that's next year's steer for our freezer because we'll need one by then. So it just so happened to be that um, it's now 16 and a half months, almost to the day, of that, that time happening. And then we coordinated, well, we brought in, brought him in a couple weeks ago when we sold the calves. I'm going to turn the camera around. Brought him in a couple weeks ago when we were selling the, the rest of the herd and got a weight on him and he's he's over 1100 pounds so that's that's really good um so like i said we are meat eaters we eat beef and as long as i've lived here on this property um we have ate our own beef we've not had to buy any beef from the store um, so we know exactly what beef we are eating so in this particular case uh you sometimes, well, let me back up. Sometimes there's bummers, which a mama has two, has twins, and she usually abandons one for whatever reason. Um, if they happen to live, they're called bummers. They're usually bottle raised unless you can graft them onto another cow, which we don't. We just bottle feed them. But um, we have had one of those as a meat source before. I personally think there's a difference between a steer that's been raised with the mama its whole life and then a bummer that was raised in a pen i digress <laughs> but um so i watched that calf be born sorry the it's supposed to be 105 here today september 4th in northern california which is just should be just wrong so there's a fly bugging me but uh i watched it be born uh it stayed with its mother the whole time on pasture and I believe in July, uh, th hold on just one second, change of scenery here, <laughs> uh, in July, um, or so in February, he went from being a bull to a steer, uh, we used the banding method, and so, and then in July, he got weaned from his mama, and then we put him in the same pasture as the heifers, and so he has been on pasture uh, since July. And then we moved him over to Sedan, which is the same field that I pointed to originally. He's been on Sedan, which is a protein-rich uh, grass. So some people still use it, some people don't. He has never been fed any sort of like loose grain. He's been on barley stubble, which is like a like just left over from when the barley was harvested. So like a grass, like a barley grass. Um, but he's never been fed any grain. Some people like to grain finish theirs. 
um, before they harvest them, we don't. Uh, we actually had the Sudan available this year. It was a great year for it actually. So we chose to just let him finish. So he's considered grass raised and grass finished. Um, I wish it was a little bit cooler of a day. Uh, but here pretty soon, uh, Jean and I are going to bring him in. So that same field, hold on. This field right here in just a little bit, the heifers and what steers were too small to sell, they're going to come up over this draw right here. And they're going to come down. They're going to go over to water. And a lot of them are going to go down over there to the tree groves for shade. So we're going to let him do his normal morning. Um, we're going to let him go over to shade and then we're going to move him into the corral. Um, I'm hoping to get all that filmed and we're going to get a weight on him. We do like to have what their end weight is, which is considered live weight. Um, like I said, we're not going to show you any of the, hold on, I'm going to turn the camera back around. I'm not going to show you any of the process. Technically, I won't be here, um, but the the process is literally instant. He he won't even know. So he's going to be munching on hay, and that's it. And then once he drops, um, they move very quickly. Um, without being too graphic, is that they start doing some dismemberment to um, because rigor mortis starts to set in they do bleed them out and they do remove their intestines and internal organs that way um, he doesn't start to rot <laughs> without getting too graphic like I said I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show any of that uh, I won't be here so it's it's okay so you don't have to worry about seeing that or not seeing it and there are plenty of videos that I'm sure show it um, my whole point in telling you any of this is that we're, we know where our meat is coming from. Our chicken and pork resource locally as much as I possibly can. Um, there is a price that comes with it, so sometimes I'm not able to. But um, And then fish, I, I do get fish from the, the grocery store. So with that said... Um, in these times, a lot of people don't realize, um, or maybe they do, when you're going to the grocery store and taking that packet of meat off the shelf, um, you technically do not know where that meat is coming from. A lot of commercially um, sourced meat, I'm going to say beef in this case, is sourced from um, other countries, Argentina, Brazil, to name a few. And uh, you don't know the quality. You don't know the quality of the living conditions that they were in when they were trucked over. Um, it may say product of the United States, and that's because if they bring a package of meat over here from another country and they rewrap it in the United States, it can be considered a product of the United States. Now, they're trying to um, pass the country of origin labeling cool and right now you may see a lot of fruits and vegetables they'll say um, grown in the USA or it'll say what state it, or what country it's grown in um, meat on the other hand uh, some of them will say not beef but some of them will say born, raised, harvested, and processed in the United States. That's awesome. Uh, beef, as far as I know, still hasn't gotten there yet. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, I watched that calf be born. I knew what standard vaccines that is normal practice for beef cattle to receive. Um, and you might want to research, research that. If you're totally anti-vaccines on the animals, um, you need to ask yourself why, first of all. And second of all, they are subject to so many diseases um, that we can't even fathom. <laughs> I mean, this, the drinking water, you know, yes, we have troughs, but, you know, and we have ponds, but 
if you have ever seen cattle near ponds, you'll know that sometimes they're drinking and going to the bathroom at the same time. I know that sounds gross, but it's just the fact of life. Um, so there are standard vaccines that they receive. Um, and when we sell the cattle, they're notified of what vac standard vaccines that they received. So he also got branded. Um, I, he got banded to turn him into a steer, which is a form of castration. And um, then he's just been out on pasture this whole time, not having, I mean, he had to come in for boosters. Um, I think he came in for fly treatment once because the flies get so bad with the heat. But um, he has lived his best life. And when people come on here and say that, I, I know firsthand that he truly has. And he's not even going to know he's having a bad day. It, it literally is instant. So um, it's I've watched it. And the first time I watched it, it did catch me off guard because I didn't I wasn't expecting it to be that instant, but they don't know. So anyways, I just want to just wanted to come on here and share a little bit of that information. Hopefully um, I don't have that many subscribers, but hopefully I don't get any hate comments. Um, if you feel the need to say a negative comment, please do all of your research first. Um, if you're anti-meat, I gave a warning at the beginning of this video to maybe skip this one. Um, I won't respond to any hate uh, messages and it, depending on what they are is I may not allow messages from you in the future and if you want to leave my channel because of it, that's perfectly fine. I'm a homesteading channel that includes this part of it. Um, so I hope you stick around and I hope you find the information that I gave you interesting. Um, I'm going to try to film the best I can when we are gathering and moving in, in the corral. And then between noon and two today is when it'll happen. Jean will be here for that. But, um, and then the process afterwards is I contact the butcher and I uh, fill out what's called a cut sheet. And uh, so the meat's going to be stripped down to a carcass. It'll be weighed then as hanging weight. It then shrinks because it's going to now not have any <laughs> moisture to it. So it's going to shrink. And then after about, uh, depending on what we agree to, it could be two weeks, it could be 30 days, then it is actually cut and wrapped into the cuts of meat that we want and the hamburger made so on and so forth um, in this particular one I'm also getting the bones um, to make beef broth and I'm going to get the leaf fat which is the fat underneath the kidneys um, it has less um, strong flavor and I'm going to use that to make our own tallow so and you can see my reflection in the window but uh, so in a couple days, I'm going to go to the butcher and I'll fill out the cut sheet telling them what size um, hamburger packages I want, um, how much fat content I want in the hamburger, how many steaks per packages, how many roasts I want, and then depending on what kind of cuts of meat I have uh, determines other cuts of meat that are available. So, um, and then sometime in October, we will pick it up and put it in the freezer and we will eat on it for way more than two years we still have beef left from the last year in 2022 we could have technically probably stretched that to november um it wouldn't have been very fun but we could have stretched it to november so we will finish that first but we before we start on the other one so in a little bit i will show you when we are bringing them in so i'll be back in just a minute okay i've zoomed in but the uh calves are starting to come in. I'm not sure if this steer is one of them, but pretty soon they're going to just start coming down that draw, just like I said. So I did zoom in so you could see them. But, um, and then earlier, um, I just rewatched the first part of this, but I had said when we brought the herd in for sale, we brought the calves in for sale. Uh, the herd is what the cows are considered. So but yep, they're starting to wander in. So I could get the binoculars out to see because um, he has a distinct marking on him that we can tell that it's him, but um, it doesn't matter. So like I said, I will show you when we bring him in. But I just wanted to show you they were coming down the draw and if I were to stand 
and being able to look more that way. Um, more up over there. Sorry, finger in the way. Uh, you would see more of them coming in, but yep, there they are every morning. And then early evening, they get a drink of water and head back out. When it's funny, it's on the other side of that hill a little bit. There's a pond over there, so but they're kind of creatures of habit. Okay, there he is. Uh, we I couldn't get us filming him getting him in because he was down by the trough below our house and he had a couple of heifers with him so we just moved him fast and then one heifer came in with him so we had to get him in here without any heifers but here he is <laughs> so that's done there he is not happy about it but he has some shade and we're gonna get him some water. So he'll be in here for a couple hours, at least two or three hours, but that's it. So not sure that I'm gonna show any more guys. So um, Gene might show when the guy shows up, but um, if he does get with the shot, it won't be the shot on him. He's a little upset because he's not used to being by himself. He's used to being with the herd or the other calves this whole time of his whole life. So he's not too sure what to do right now. So anyways, guys, like I said, if uh, Gene might get some of when they show up and he might get the sound of the shot, but he won't actually get the kill shot. I, I don't think we can show it on here anyways. And I wouldn't want to. Um, you guys can kind of get the gist, but... Like I said, it is instant. So I think we're gonna get a weight on him and then go from there.